What is going on guys? In this video, I want to go through a system design exercise. I have never done this before in this channel. This is, will be a new a fresh perspective of how to actually uh, do a system design and I picked in this case uh, how to do a multiplayer game design okay and uh, I'm gonna go through some expectation for you guys uh, just to talk through what are you gonna expect to get out of this video and um, and uh, we're gonna pick up a game that we're gonna build and there will be some expectation that comes with it. And if you're interested, stay tuned. So here's what we're going to build, guys. The expectation here is gonna we're going to build a, a multiplayer game, right? And we're going to go through what game it exactly is. But what we're going to get to is we're, we're not going to talk about products per se. Like, uh, we're just going to talk about software engineering technologies. So, for example, I'm not going to mention Redis or Postgres. I'm going to say database that gives you the flexibility as a as an implementer to kind of pick any technology you want to implement right this is just we're talking about the the aspect of the technology it's like not not the actual product okay so if, if you see me like oh this is a communication protocol you can use WebSockets, grpc it depends on what or really on where you want to go and this is where you shine as a software engineer right picking the right piece of product that actually uh, fits your use cases and what are you trying to build, okay? So this is what we're going to talk about. It's going to be a high-level design discussion. That doesn't mean that there will not be engineering talk. I'll talk a lot, a lot about engineering, but it's going to be a high-level design. There will be no implementation detail like, oh, you have to send a JSON or, or for example, oh, you have to, for example, establish a two-way communication, right? This is going to be a little bit of high-level design. And I'm going to propose two designs to solve this problem, okay? And uh, we're going to show the pros and cons of this design, right? And uh, let's just jump into it. So this is the game we are trying to build, guys. And you can imagine this as a multiplayer game. It could be a mobile game. It could be a browser-based game. Desktop only. It's up to you, right? So here's the game. Uh, the four clients, player one, two, three, four, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm using colors here. Um, I apologize for the color blind, but this is a red player. Player two is blue, player three is green, and player four is orange. And uh, each player has a board uh, with cells and numbers. And this, you can you can imagine this board to have unlimited number of size, depends on your requirement. So I have nine cells here, and let's say player one want to capture cell five, right? So if it does that, it will essentially capture cell five and then broadcast somehow to all clients that cell five has been captured by player one, which is the red player. And then player four comes in, let's say, and want to capture cell seven, right? So it becomes orange, and then it will broadcast this state to all of them. So now seven is now belong to orange. And then player two recaptures cell five, which belongs to player one, and that's perfectly fine. And now you broadcast the state that, oh, cell five is now belong to two. And you get the idea, right? You can go uh, like this until someone eventually uh, win the whole board, after 30 seconds, that's the game. The game ends after 30 seconds, and the moment the 30 second ta done, you can either result in a draw or one of them player game wins. Like in this case, this player one win uh, with four cells. Okay, so that's the game. So let's imagine how we can implement this game. What kind of features we have? We have a create game, right? I want to create a new game. I want to have nine cells. I want, for example, yeah, I want to have nine cells. I want this kind of configuration and you create a game. And then once you create a game, you get some sort of a handle, I guess, to share this game with other players so they can join the game. So you can share this uh, handle or it could be URL or anything like that and then people can join the game, okay? So create a game, obviously, that's a very important feature. Join game and play. There's a, an act of a play, and what does that mean, right? 
And then the final one is actually how to broadcast the score, right? This is also one of the features, a little bit of a technical feature if you think about it. These are, this is called user features and this is called technical features. Yeah, technical features, if you, if you work with as a product owner, if you own a product, you'll always separate uh, your your features into two types. You're, there are features that are user faced like these, and there is a feature that are kind of hidden from the user, but you have to implement it. This is called, this is an example. Score broadcasting has nothing to do with the user. The user is just expected, but it's a technical feature to implement, right? So how do you broadcast a, a score? Uh, I am using, in this case, the server authoritative multiplayer model where the server pushes the state to the client instead of only the changes. All right, so this is this is one of the model. And you can shine here, guys, as a software engineer. You can just pick. There are literally unlimited ways of solving a problem. And that's what makes us... Uh, the software engineering is is a great artistic effort, in my opinion. I, I really believe that and I and, and abide by it. I think that I think software engineering design is a very artistic way of solving things. There is so many ways to solve a problem and each one kind of tells about the personality of, of the designer. I might be going too deep there. <laughs> All right, this is the first proposed design that I have thought about. Guys, I'm proposing two, but as you will go through that, you will have your own ideas and maybe they are way better than mine. Hundred percent. I will I will guarantee that some of you guys will come up with better designs. So please leave them in the comment section below so we can have a discussion and, and grow as software engineers because I learn from you guys as well. Okay. So let's come up with a with a proposed design that I have came up with. My first design is a to go with a stateful application design. And when I say stateful or stateless here, I'm talking about the application server that actually uh, have the game code itself, okay? The statelessness or statefulness here is with regard to the application server, right? the whole system is always going to be stateful. That's a very important point, guys. There is no system that I at least ran into that is absolutely stateless. You're going to store some sort of a state in a database eventually, right? But I'm talking about the application here. The application is stateful. The system is also stateful in this case. We're going to go through the other case. All right, so stateful. What happens here is all players in a particular game that you create must reside in the same server. And there are advantages of this. That's why I picked up this design. There are also disadvantages we're gonna go through. So that's the first design. Any player that come, comes and want, for example, you wanna create a game, all of them will reside in the same server. We're gonna make sure to cluster them in the game server. And you, you might say, how, Hussein? And that, we have a unique identifier, which is the game itself, the game ID, right? And the game state also reside in the same server, and that gives us kind of data locality, which is kind of attractive feature. All right, so that's the first design. The second design is a stateless design where, again, the application level is stateless. That means this, we're not storing state in the application, at least, uh, we're talking maybe ephemeral state where cached, but the actual state is stored in the database somewhere. It could be Redis, MySQL, anything you can imagine, right? And these guys are stateless. That means any that you can create a game and this request can go to this server and you can join a game, you can go to this server and you can see this, the scaling that you can actually go through the load balancer and the load balancer can actually have more uh, distribution of the request, right? Versus the older design, which all of the requests that has to do with the one game will always go to one server. Okay, you can start seeing the advantages and disadvantages guy with this, right? So yeah, so the state is stored here and the statelessness is here, right? So I can destroy the server and absolutely my application will just heal itself, which is beautiful. All right, 
How about we go through each design in detail and we'll have some discussions and see the pros and cons of each of them. The first design, which is the stateful design, right? I am player A, which is the blue color, and I want to create a new game and I'm gonna call it GA. You can, you can choose not to give a game name, but that's also part of the features that you need to implement, right? By the way, this, this thing is a load balancer. That's why it's a reverse proxy, not necessarily a load balancer. Let's be very specific here. So I'm going to create a game, guys, right? And then when we create a game, I am going to take that game ID somehow and hash it so that I always result consistently on a server, right? This is called consistent hashing. And now once I get that, this game ID will always point me to this server, okay? The act of making these requests are stateless, but the routing will become stateful and will always end up into one server, good? So I created a game and I end up with this server, okay? That's the first act. And I'm gonna store the game GA in this server. You notice that I don't even have a database here, okay? And you might say, oh, Hussein, you don't have a database. What if the application dies? Yeah, I lose, I lose the score and I am okay with that. Join game, so that's the second feature. If you wanna join the game, player A, the who created the game, can actually decide to join the game ID and this game ID you can share it via, I don't know, WhatsApp or messaging, <laughs> right? And they get the game ID and you share it. URL, you can use your imagination, right? And now I have that game ID and I wanna join that game. And if you get join this game, that reverse proxy is smart enough to take that game and, ooh, that's game ID, I'm gonna hash it and I'm gonna end up in the same server. The act by ending up in the same server is beautiful because I have the state here and I'm sure that the state is here so I can look up the state very quickly. And I join it and I updated that, hey, player A just joined the game. This is the blue player. And now you can just join player B and C and D, the green, the red, the, the orange. And all of them will use the same code and they will go to the same server which is awesome. Now all the players, we updated the game state, so now all the players are in the same game, all the players are in the same server, and they are essentially rock and rolling, all right? All right, how about we actually put this to test? We're gonna play the game with design one. So if I wanna play a game, you would say player A, which is the blue player, want to play on game GA, and it want to capture cell number five. So you can you can have your imagination run wild here. This could be protocol buffer communication. This could be a REST endpoint. This could be WebSocket uh, or gRPC, anything, right? And then the moment I do that, I will obviously, since I sent the GA, now I can consistently hash to the server that is available right, hopefully still available, and I'm gonna get to the server, I have the game state, I'm gonna update the game state uh, locally, because it's locally in the state, in the in the server itself, memory, and then I'm gonna update that, hey, the blue player is now captured cell five, and then let's play the red player, B, is capturing four, well, yeah, let's go ahead and update four, same thing, we're gonna hash the same server, Remember, if I hit this server, there is nothing for me to update. There is no game, right? Because the game is here. All right, so then I'm going to play with a, uh, let's say, player, fa, uh, player C, GA, and then I'm going to capture 5, which happened to be the play, uh, a cell that uh, player the blue player has captured. So we're going to capture it again. And then the orange player captures one. So this is the state of the game is now this. See, these numbers, these are things that I will get an update. Hey, all right. Oh, cell number one belongs to the yellow. Cell number five belongs to green. Cell number four belongs to red. And the blue guy ha has no cells, right? How about we talk about broadcast broadcasting the score or broadcasting the state, right? Broadcasting the state is actually reversed. The server will talk to the reverse proxy 
or the load balancer says, hey, by the way, I have everything here on me, literally everything in my server. So it is very efficient to just send the whole dang state down the wire and essentially to all the players, because I have the sockets of those players, assuming this is warp sockets, you can send all this information to, to all the players. If you're not using a bi-directional pro, pro, protocol, then this is not possible. So you might want these guys will stop pulling information or use event sourcing to push this information down or maybe HTTP to push, okay? But to me, WebSockets is, is, is the most elegant one to design here. Don't have to use it, but definitely it's one of the best Right, definitely works on in everything client, right? Web browsers and all that stuff, right? This just will work. All right, so that's how broadcast states. How about we go to the stateless design and see how it will work? Okay, the stateless design, we're gonna have a database here where we're gonna store the state, right? And when I create a game, I can hit any server. The load balancer doesn't have this weird hashing thing that it does, right? It's just literally just do, does a round robin and hits you the first server, which will just act like a dumb uh, database connection and just store, just literally just store the result in the database, right? So now we have a game that is here, okay? And now we have the game ID. I want to join the game and I have GA. This is the game. Doesn't matter. I don't have knowledge of the game in the load balancer or the reverse proxy anymore. That complexity has been removed. But if I make a request, I can hit this server or this, and I want to join because this server now will query, oh, where is this game stored? Oh, this is the game. Okay, now it exists. Let me store it. Now you store that player A has just joined the game, which is awesome. How about we follow up with another player that wants to join the game? Absolutely okay. Player B, which is the red player, wants to join the game. Well, I'm going to hit this server, and that's okay. You start load balancing your servers, which is awesome, right? Now you're kind of load balancing your servers, even in a single game, right? In the previous design, you're still load balancing, by the way, guys, but it's a pair game load balancer. The whole players... If you create a new game, you will hit another server, right? But all the players must be in the same game and the same server. This case, no, not necessarily. Even in players on the same game will hit multiple servers, which will scale. But there are some disadvantages to this. Let's join some other player. Okay, green will hit the first server. The, the yellow will hit the second server. And all the people have joined. And we have the states persist in a database actually persist so the whole thing that goes down and i rebooted the whole system still okay i can somehow resume the game if i wanted to unlike the first design play game let's let's actually play i want player a want to capture cell five well let's hit the first server and i want to update that entry in the database that now cell five is belong to me sir right and then player b want to actually capture cell phone number four well i can hit any server that's okay and that will hit eventually the database which could be by the way horizontally scale if you have like a kind of a master backup uh, scenario it doesn't have to be one node right just think about it this way you, if you're readers you can have uh, backups that actually read from read from the backups and the writes goes to the master Absolutely fine. All right. So player uh, B captures cell four. Player C captures cell five again. So we're overriding that. So you'll notice that this is like a last win in kind of a thing, right? So this is the game is like every, the last one will win the, the one, the cell. So you will have to always keep clicking, clicking, clicking in order to win, win the game. That's, that's the idea of the game. It's kind of silly, but... Uh, just something I came up with. 
So play game G, A, and D. Uh, obviously, this is capturing still one, and you can hit any third server. And awesome. All right, let's see how we can broadcast the score in this architecture and design. So the game state is here, right? Nothing is stored here. Maybe you can catch some stuff, but it's not, it's not reliable per se. So what happened here is periodically, maybe every 500 milliseconds, the servers will query the database for the latest state and whomever is on the server connected, because it could be two player, one player, or three, or all of them, doesn't matter, right? And we're gonna tell those players that, hey, by the way, the state is now this. So the clients can update their view. So there's, oh, this is the, now, whatever, right? Uh, the yellow is now belong to the uh, the one, cell one number one belongs to the orange, uh, cell number five belongs to the green, and cell number four belongs to the red. So this is how I represented it. It looks like very JSON-y, but it could be protocol buffer. Any format will work, okay? And the other server has to do the same thing. Every single server has to query the database. And you can see, start seeing, this is what began, become a bad, 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 I cannot talk. It's going to become a bottleneck if you don't have some horizontal scalability going on there. So you need some sort of a replication, which, which could be achieved. All right. So now query is this database and send all that information. So you can see that there's some chatter going on here. There is to build the state. I have to query the database, which I have to jump to the network to do it. Okay. So there is some latency added, right? And we can talk about that now. Pros and cons. Let's talk about the pros and cons of each of these designs. And you can guys run wild with your imagination and come up with more designs. And I'm pretty sure you already, as you're reading this and you, as you're watching this, you are having some ideas to improve this and even to, to become way better than I, whatever I proposed. But let's, let's come up maybe some, some hybrid approach. Let's go through the bad things or the good thing about the stateful. The stateful architecture is definitely easier to build if you think about it, right? I don't have to maintain a, a database, right? So it is. it will make, make things very simple. The assembly of the state, the broadcasting of the state will be simple because I have everything in memory, literally just dump it to all my players, which are in my, I loop through all the game state, all the players and, and send them information immediately. If you have a push a communication protocol, a communication protocol that supports push. Low latency, there is absolutely no latency because the game state is in me. It's data locality 101, right? All the data is in my server, so I don't have to jump hoops to collect things. Definitely less network bandwidth because uh, there won't be chatter compared to the stateless approach, right? Not just chatter between the server and the database, chatter between all the servers trying to assemble the game state between that are fractioned uh, across all the servers, right? If the game server goes down, the problem with this is there is no scalability, right? When I say no scalability is, well, the server, if that game server goes down, which has the state, you're done. You're done. Absolutely, you're done. That's it. The, the game is end. Right. And I kind of willing to take that. Right. Because the game finishes in 30 seconds. And the, the fact that the idea that the game, the server can go in 30 seconds. I don't know about that. Right. If I have a lot of servers, I might not have this problem, but might be wrong. But there's no scalability here. Nevertheless. Right. The server goes down. That's it. You cannot kind of fix and and assemble pieces together to resume the game. Right. It's just gone. Right. And uh, another another problem is here is just you can see that all the games might lead to the same server because of a hashing consistent hashing might give you not correctly hitting the same server, which can 
overwhelm the server, right? But if these are Docker containers, who cares, right? If this is like a part of a Docker container, you can spin up really a lot of containers. And I was, I am imagining this to be a very low application level. The code won't be heavy and the process will be very quick. So as I'm expecting this, the footprint of the game to be very, very light. Right. So I kind of like this a lot, but let's talk about the stateless. The stateless architecture definitely scales because I can literally kill one of the servers and the next request will just go to another server and eventually makes itself down to the database, which will query. So it's definitely, definitely e uh, scales, right? And yeah, but it is harder to build. When I say harder, guys, it's just more components, right? Because you need to worry about a database now and you need to worry about latency, definitely higher latency now. You have a networking going on between the server and the database you need, and you have a lot of networking between the server and the proxy, which is the load balancer. The load balancer has to kind of, uh, will be a lot of chatter between the server and the, all the servers, to be honest, right? If the game server goes down, definitely you can resume the game. There is no problem with this design. Definitely just kill any server and then resume the game completely, right? So I'm kind of torn between these two designs, guys. And uh, I think I lean towards the stateful, but I still think it's not straightforward to implement this hashing thing that we talked about so that the game... I took the game state and hash it so it always goes to a single server. I think HA proxy can achieve that. Even Nginx can achieve that with some scripting. I think Lua, Nginx have some Lua scripting that can allow you to do that. But I might be wrong. But nevertheless, the stateless architecture is also attractive because you can, you can just make the load balancer literally a dumb reverse proxy that doesn't have any knowledge of your game right and have the application logic on the on the server itself right that's another kind of a disadvantage of the stateful architecture where your code is split between the load balancer and also the application logic is also in the server right so there are complexity and i i can't i prefer the stateful but i think I'm torn. I don't know which one to pick, to be honest. What do you guys think? What third and fourth and fifth design do you guys propose, right? Let's just keep thinking. Let's keep those discussions coming in, this, uh, in the comment section below. And uh, what do you guys think about this episode? Did you like this video? Uh, do you want me to make more of this system design kind of a videos? I'm happy to do that. I'm picking another another. Uh, another design to actually implement like Twitter or, or, or YouTube or maybe even WhatsApp or cha uh, chatting application. And right? we can just think. It's, uh, I want you to understand, guys, that this is, there is no one way to build application. There is no, war definitely there is no one right way. If you're going to an interview, a design interview, uh, the interviewer will have something in his mind or her mind, but you have to stay true to yourself and just be honest. Just don't don't expect to answer what is what in the interviewer's mind. Just lay all the uh, cards on the table, discuss everything you know, and if there is something you don't know, that's a great opportunity to learn. Right, learn from the interviews. Like, hey, if I go now to an interview and and someone, I will tell them like, okay, this is what I know. I would prefer this approach because of this, 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 this. Uh, there's this approach, but this is this, this. It really depends. I don't know what to. Pick. I'm gonna say I don't know what to pick. I'm gonna uh, if if push comes to shove, I'm gonna pick one and run with it. To be honest, I am totally fine with this approach. Right. Uh, sometimes you will have to just. You know, pick something and don't paralyze yourself, right? Because you will never get it right. You will never get it right. No, don't don't ever think that that companies know what they're doing, right? They will go through a design and they will run into a 
trouble and they will tweak things and will move forward. So if they, if you're interviewing, if you're in an interview and you're and the interviewer is asking you something in in an hour and they expect you to to come up with a perfect solution, they are delusional, right? Because people take months to to research and design something and you're not going to get it in an hour. They know that. They should know that. They want you to know how you're thinking. And that what matters. They want you to have a flexible, fluid kind of thinking, right? Think about all the possibilities, the pros and cons, right? Uh, what, as you can see, I'm st- I'm still torn. What what to pick, right? Pick first or second? Maybe a hybrid. Maybe I still gonna keep a database with a stateful approach and periodically store the state in a database, but keep the state in 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 a server somewhere. Yeah. It's uh, that's how how would the system design works. Just, there is no one way to solve the problem, and that what makes us software engineer a very creative field to be in. Just and don't don't beat yourself up if you can't think of a solution that is absolutely perfect. If you're if you're torn and you're thinking as you keep designing and as you keep working the problem and you keep getting with more problem. You're absolutely normal because that's the state of software engineering. There is sometimes you kind of get this nice click that's perfect, but there won't be a perfect solution. That's the that's what I what I notice in the in the, all the videos that I watch in the software engineering. They they ship you this design as if it's the perfect one, and I don't. I I don't I don't know if I agree with that. Right? It's just oh, this is the way to do it perfect. Nah, I don't know about that. There's always going to be a better way of doing anything. All right, guys. Sorry I, I mumbled there in the end. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and suggest what should I do next. Tell me in the comment section below. You guys stay safe out there.